Gord Downey is remembered in the hearts of Canadians as an icon whose presence, storytelling and voice were like no other. But his legacy lives on through his music and his commitment to Indigenous reconciliation. The Gord Downey and Chenny Wenjack Fund is excited to announce its involvement in a free concert as part of Indigenous History Month celebrations taking place across the country. Gore Downey's brother Mike and Riley Goldsmith from the Downey and Wenjack Fund join me this morning in studio. Thank you both for being here. Um, let, Mike, tell me about what's happening on Wednesday. On Wednesday, uh, the Native Canadian Centre of Toronto is holding uh, their annual event. They've been doing it for nine years at Young Dundas Square. This year, we've partnered up with them to take over the evening uh, programming, uh, and we're bringing in three fantastic bands. We're encouraging Torontonians and anybody who's in the area to come down, learn a little bit about Indigenous culture, and, and have a great time. Um, you know, with the Downey Wenjack Fund, our idea is to bring two solitudes together, Indigenous and non-Indigenous. And I think that music and art uh, are just a great way for people to kind of break the ice and, and really just start to get to know each other. Riley, what would you add uh, to what Mike just said about the fund that was so close to Gord's heart? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's it's really going to be a really excellent event. I think it's going to be a really great opportunity for um, Indigenous and non-Indigenous people to come together in you know a very um, open and fun, free event for for everybody. So it'll be a really great opportunity for people who maybe don't know a lot about Indigenous history or Indigenous heritage to come out, um, experience some of the traditional dances, the drummers, and to to take in the music, um, and to take in all the artwork that's going to be present in the square. <laughs> Mike, you know, the, the world that we're living in today, a little bit different than the world that uh, Gord left um, just a, sh a short while ago. What do you think he would want to say to people today as we're sort of experiencing so much tumult around the world? Mm. You know, Ben, I, I, think, I think Gord would want to say, you know, look at your country. Um, think about who we are. You know, I think sometimes we're a little bit too quick to pat ourselves on the back as Canadians. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of work to be done here. I think there's a lot of work to be done to make this country more equitable and more inclusive. And you know, Gord always felt um, growing up in this country that there was something missing. There was a piece missing. Uh, as good as it is and as good as it's been, that there's a piece missing. And he came to learn that for him that piece was indigenous, indigenous culture and indigenous lives. And that, that, that has been missing in our sense of who we are. Um, I think Gord would say, you know, learn about your country. Learn about your deep history, not 150 years of history. And I'm so glad that you brought that up because, Riley, that's what I want to touch on next. I mean, so many of us learn about uh, Indigenous history and culture much later in life than we probably should. We learn about it as adults through the newspaper, through the Truth and Reconciliation Committee. I mean, th these are the th things that we learn. Rather than learning about this in our formative years where we really should be taking an interest, where, where, where it should be part of a curriculum, talk to me about sort of the, yeah. like bridging that gap at a younger age. Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, I think it's really interesting that you say that because so many people that I, I talk to about the fund and just about um, what reconciliation is, so many people are not aware of the, the history of Indigenous people in Canada and what residential schools even are. And so part of our aim is to, you know, obviously raise awareness about this and to educate Canadians. And that starts with getting people um, in when they're young. So reaching out to people in schools, um, you know, it starts with a secret path. Uh, curriculum that's built all around uh, the Secret Path documentary and the, the, the graphic novel, um, the movie. So I think that's a really powerful tool. You know, we have schools all across Canada who are bringing this to their classrooms and starting that conversation at a really young age. And I think it's going to start this movement of people, movement of youth who grow up having this knowledge just built in and this understanding. And I think that will be a really powerful start to reconciliation in Canada. You know, for so many people, Mike, uh, Gord's legacy is one of uh, incredible music, mm. uh, you know, telling the stories of Canadians from coast to coast. This, this secret path, this could end up eclipsing even that in a lot of people's minds. It could be more significant for a lot of people uh, than even his incredible music contribution. How do you think he'd feel about that? <laughs> it's funny you should say that. Uh, I think you're right. I mean, I think they, they go hand in hand. Because yeah. I think what happened was, Ben, is that so many people got on board with the hip and Gord over the last 30 years. And, and I think for many Canadians, Gord, through the lyrics and with the band's music, kind of opened their eyes to this country, sort of made us start, you know, all the name references and all those kind of things. And then Gord kind of turned it 
in the last couple of years of his life by saying, you know, we've celebrated our country, let's take a closer look, mm -hmm. and it's not that pretty. It's not as pretty as what we've kind of been, you know, been led to believe. Um, but I think you're right. I think when it comes to something like, I mean, legacy would be a word Gord wouldn't be very comfortable no. with. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, he wouldn't be. But it's, it's unfinished he, work. It's For sure, yeah. for sure. And I think what he really wanted, what he really wanted to leave us was just the idea of, you know, Gord would never turn away from the tough stuff, mm -hmm. the tough conversations. Um, he was, he pushed himself so hard. And I think he would want the country to push itself, to do better, to not just say, you know, don't let good be the enemy or uh, of great. Be great, and and I think that's I think I think he could see it that this country was going to go in this direction. We're going to create a better, more inclusive country, and a, you know I think we could be the envy of the world. Well, he you know he he set it up in in the in the last weeks, days, and months of his life where he threw down the gauntlet mm -hmm. and he challenged Canada to be yeah. better. And I think he inspired a lot of people to do just that. Thank you both so much for continuing his work. We really appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by the show today. Oh, thanks, Ben.